dear auditory, dear chairs, thank you for this great opportunity and the invitation for this talk. My name is Anna Dupree and I come from Hamburg, Germany and I'm really excited to share our experiences with the use of fluorescent imaging angiography in the management of intestinal ischemia. First of all, I have nothing to disclose. What are we going to talk about during this talk is first the basics of quantification we were dealing with in our experimental studies. We try to find a method which can accurately predict the perfusion in different clinical settings and visceral tissues. And afterwards I want to show you two clinical applications in mesenteric ischemia. First of all, uh, what is the acute mesenteric ischemia? It is defined as a sudden interruption of blood supply to a segment of a small intestine leading to ischemia. Looking at the current guidelines published by the World Society of Emergency Surgery, we differentiate between non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia and occlusive mesenteric ischemia, which differ in the cause of the circulatory disorder, but not in the result. Although the incidence is really low, the mortality remains still really high at 50 to 80 percent. In a study conducted by our own clinic, the evalu evaluation of 300 patients showed a mortality of 68% of those who survived, and that is the main fact or the interesting fact. Nearly everybody developed a short bowel syndrome. The question is what is perfused enough and can we avoid to resect bowel? which has the potential to regenerate and in my opinion this is the most important field of application for fluorescence angiography. So what is perfused enough? To answer this question we conducted a study in a porcy model recently published in PLOS ONE. The intraoperative decision making about potentially reversible ischemic areas is subjective and highly depends on the experience of each surgeon. Despite the regular appearance of intact serosa, mucosal ischemia can still be present, leading to undervalue extent of tissue destruction. So we tried to find out if fluorescence angiography can help to objectify the evaluation of intestinal viability and resection margins. We designed that study as follows. We had pigs which were randomized into three groups with total ischemia duration of 3, 6 and 10 hours and we had three regions of interest which were defined in ischemic, transitional and control areas. We then performed three measurements at baseline occlusion and 60 minutes after reperfusion and in order to establish safe ischemia, a side branch of the AMS was closed and you can have a closer look on this experimental setting in the publication. What we did then was to generate a fluorescent intensity curve in every region of interest and we established two parameters in a former study which is also published in PLAS1 last year concerning the perfusion and the fluorescent intensity curves in a one vessel model using a gastric tube model uh, comparable to the gastric tube model in esophagectomy patients and we correlated this technique in this study with fluorescent microspheres as the gold standard. This was a kind of laborious uh, technique 
but we can sh could show that the quantitative assessment of the gastric tube per perfusion was well correlated with the microspheres, and we could define two parameters, the slope of fluorescence intensity and the background subtracted fluorescence intensity, um, which are different parameters to assess the perfusion of the tissue. Here are some of our results in order to compensate for hemodynamic differences, which are usually common also during an operation in real life or in daily business. We calculated a ratio for this series of experiments, uh, thus a ratio to baseline for each group at occlusion and reperfusion was chosen. And the usage of this ratio makes it really easy to interpret the fluorescence intensity values. So values equal to 1 are equal to baseline, predicting a good perfusion, and values over 1 indicating a hyperperfusion or a hyperfluorescence and while you use under one a lower perfusion or a lower intensity of fluorescence. The ratio itself is also a valuable instrument for comparing recurrent measurements during one operation in one individual and we can see circulations and fluctuations in volume during these measurements. Here in this um, in this slide, you can see uh, hyperfusion after ischemia and reperfusion, which can result in a overestimation of fluorescence intensity and of perfusion. The second uh, point is the uh, BSFI. And here you can also see that we have a hyperperfusion in the area after reperfusion. But the interesting in this point is that you have after six hours of ischemia also a hyperperfusion. And we was wondering about that, figuring out that the cause compared to the histopathology is not a hyperperfusion and a potential well-perfused tissue, no, it's a capillary leakage indicating also a tissue damage. I now I would like to show you some clinical examples. We currently try to confirm our results and find a valid cutoff values or a valid cutoff value uh, as we try to find out although in the gastric tube perfusion which is recently under submission. So this is a first case and I'm sorry but the video does not work with the presentation and audio mode so you have to be fine with this picture of the fluorescence intensity and it's a patient from the ICU unit with a mesoteric ischemia and you can see we have that well perfused bowl on the right and the not that good perfused bowl on the left and the ischemic part in the middle and what we did is that we back table created that fluorescence intensity curves to evaluate the perfusion and we could see a really nice SFI curve and SFI values compared to the ischemic area and using our ratios you can see that the ratio is really low predicting that that kind of bowl is not um, able to regenerate and this is what we also found we could really predict that that um, outcome in this case. In the second case we have a, another patient with also a mesenteric ischemia and we was not sure if we can leave that bowel or if we have to resect it because in the macroscopic aspect it was really uh, stressed 
and we decided to do another second look on the following day and using that fluorescence intensity curve evaluation we could see that the SFI ratio was quite good with just a half of perfusion compared to the baseline value and we found that we did not have to resect this parts of the bowl. So I can conclude that the fluorescence intensity is validated for measurement of bowel perfusion, but we still need further survival studies to prove this method. Thank you for your attention and bye bye from Hamburg.